before we start the video, I just want to let you know that I do have a Patreon, and it's the only way to keep this channel alive. If you want to be a member of my Patreon, it's in the link in the description down below. In order to react to videos like these, since this is a Patreon requested video, I have to let you guys know, you only be a member, you have to be a Hobbiton hero, or a Hobbiton protector on my Patreon. This will help this will help you to request for videos in the future, and maybe some artwork. That's all I have to say. I hope you guys get the message, and like I said, if you want to request a video, you got to be a member on my Patreon. That's the only way to, be, to, to do so. And it's, and it's, and it's in the it's link in the description down below. Now, enough of that. Let's get on to the reaction, shall we? And I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, and, and let's get this started. What is up YouTube, Frost the Hobbit in here, and today I'm back with another reaction video for all of you. And this is a Patreon video for Zach, Zach Cal once again. He requested me to do another Ben 10, all, ben 10 Homelands and Beyond from the Ink Tank. And I get to learn more about the alien races, so thank you Zach Cal for this, for this request on Patreon. If you guys want to, get a, want to request a video on Patreon, you know the rules. I, I introduce this every time in the beginning of the videos. You gotta be a member of the Hobbiton squad, a Hobbiton protector. Or if you just if you can't do that, you can just be a Hob you can just be a Hobbiton scout. Or hit the join button to be a Hobbiton to be a Ho to be a, to, be a, to, to join the Hobbiton squad. Or just hit the join button to hit to be a member of the Hobbiton squad to help show your support. I really appreciate that. You guys are mate. You guys are you guys are awesome. I appreciate your support. Now let's get on to reaction. The link is in the description down below, so go check it out for yourself, so you can come back and see me react to it. All right, that's enough said for introductions. It's, this video's gone long enough. Let's get on to it. In three, two, one, go. The Ink Tank. Gotta love the Ink Tank. And we're learning about some monster aliens. Oh. Luke, oh. Driva. Any luck? The oh, Ben. Have been made. The new enhancement will allow Horus to disguise himself based on the primary residence in his proximity. It's a nice Ben voice. I like, I like, I like, I like the voice acting in this. Ooh. Sweet. But you're sure this plan's gonna work? They really don't do well around visitors. Last time I was there, they thought I was a monster. Well, can you blame them? As long as Horace keeps a low profile, <laughs> we should be. I think I, I remember that episode. It's been a while. System without being detected. Oh, that Activating was a fun episode. Programming coordinates now. Good work, guys. The hunt for Zaskir is on. All right. Good evening, extranet and multidimensional travelers. Join me if you dare on a journey. I Tricks and Lee is the voice of Ben in this. All right, Welcome I see multiple planets. System, one of the most feared and reviled collections of planets in two galaxies. Got the it. Of Anur refuse any and all contact with beings not native to their system due to the perception of such physically different species being feared and labeled as monsters. But thanks Got to it. the work of the system's sole plumber agent, Scout Lunas, we have been granted special access to the strange topography of Anur. I remember you guys. been collecting reports the past few days. Residents of Anur are claiming they've seen Zaskir creeping around, but we can't pinpoint exactly where he's hiding. Horus, I'll need you to investigate each location. Keep your radar sharp, got it? Affirmative, Commander Ben Tennyson. You can Commander? Just call me ben. Affirmative, Ben. Let's just call him Ben. Man, I don't like the ti I don't like the titles either. I'm known as Prince Frost of the Hobbit and Race. But I just like people just call me just call me Frost. Okay.
Oh boy. Welcome to the ghastly rift of Ener Phaetos. Unlike most planetary systems, Ener orbits around a black hole instead of a star. Inside that black hole is oh, a wow. metaphysical celestial pocket filled with bone-like structures and masses thought to be the remnants of an ancient cosmic giant. This is Phaetos. Apologies, the frequencies connection may weaken the further we go down into the rift. Got it. Get to know. Uh, so. Phaetos well, is home to this the looks creepy. Ectoplasmic life forms resembling ghosts. Ghost freak. It's aliens. Many have varying forms, but one trait all ectonerites share is one solid exterior vein that wraps all around their body. Ew. That is creepy. One singular eye to travel along. They also come equipped with a malleable layer of protective skin. This skin that is, is the most physically solid part of an ectoneurite. The atoms that make up their bodies are spread very thin, and thanks to the ectoplasm holding them together, ectoneurites can manipulate their own physical density, giving them the abilities of flight, intangibility, and invisibility. Ooh. They All right, spread I like that. reach to separate entities, living or not, adding telepathy and mental overshadowing to their catalog of creepy capabilities. I remember possessing people. The game can turn other people into the same race they are. Their atoms will spread too thin, and the ectonarite's physical form will completely dissipate. But photophobia doesn't stop them from leaving their rift. Following the lead of their high ecto lords, Zisker, they migrated from planet to planet, seeking to take control of the populace. With their lord wanting Got to spread it. his influence too quickly, he left the system in search of a powerful host to aid in his conquer of an Earth. After making a brief return five years ago, multi-galactic hero Ben Tennyson had banished to scare by leaving a miniature artificial sun at the center of his castle. This castle is okay. located on Ener Transil, which we will be visiting very soon. Without their leader to command them, the Ectonarites became enamored with the various cultures and lives outside their empty void and befriended their neighbors instead of controlling them. They now inhabit many planets in the inner system alongside the other species. Got it. The next of which will give you a run for your money. I mean, money. There seems to be no signs of scare here. And I'm beginning You're to fritzing up again. So You're fritzing up, buddy. Stop, You're a bit fritzing up there. Welcome to the mineral planet Ener Kufos. Being Ener -Kufos. the closest planet to the sun, Kufos is very hot, dry, and bright. Its terrain is mainly comprised of sand and stone, with large deposits of a mutagenic mineral known as corodium. Corodium, corodium. Can be found in either crystalline or metallic forms and generate high levels of energy. Oh! This energy, though very versatile in use, is severely harmful to many organic life forms. Due to their species developing around it, inhabitants of Ener are immune to its negative effects. Yeah! Which is a good thing okay, keep that away from us. System, but nowhere more abundant than Kufos. Kufos okay, to good to know. Kufon, gangly bipedal creatures composed of a series of thin bandage-like appendages stemming from the base of their Mummy. heads. These bandages have a very high tensile strength and elasticity, so much so they can lift up to 34 times their own weight. On average, a Thep Kufon oh, can up to 5,000 feet of bandage a day, much of which many sell to other species as material for clothing. Ah, hey, get, get, get your bandages, get your bandages, all for a low price. Wealthier Kufon will wear much more jewelry and articles to show off their status, as well as sleep Got in sarcophagus it. made out of pure corodium. The Kufons must sleep in sarcophagus because on Kufos, the sun never sets. The quality of one's sarcophagi is a good ah, symbol the sun never said. Their competitive market culture and lust for wealth has led many to venture off-planet in search of treasures and artifacts. Records indicate that there have been multiple instances of Thep Kufon temporarily migrating to other planetary systems to harvest new rare materials, most notably gold oh. from an early Earth. As a result of their oh. pure planetary greed, they influenced an entire people's culture for hundreds of years and were worshipped They traveled to Egypt. This left an impact on Earth so much so that they still have monuments standing today. But resources weren't the only thing Kufans took from Earth. They also okay. brought back some of their followers. Enjoying their newfound worship, they brought large groups of humans back to Anur to continue to serve them. Unfortunately, upon arrival, they began to mutate and become aggressive as a reaction to the high level of corodium radiation. Yeah, not a good idea. Not being able to contain Is it, they didn't mean it by they didn't mean it by that. It, it didn't go so well. To their problem, the Kufan abandoned yeah. the mutants on the closest neighboring planet, Anur Oromero.
Okay. What's the next planet? Welcome to the desolate planet of Oromero. With a train of dead soil and withering plant life, Oromero is stuck in the shadow of Kufos. So they dumped no them on this planet. Sunlight, but all the residual heat, creating a very muggy and humid atmosphere. It struggles Got to it. maintain a healthy biome. However, despite this, is still capable of maintaining life of many insect species, as well as the misshapen writhers. <laughs> A uh, hi there, hand. Descendants of the aforementioned mutant humans abandoned on the planet. Because Oromero's corrodian oh, yeah. were previously harvested by the Kuflan, the planet has a very low level of radiation. Quarantining the humans on this planet gave their DNA time to adapt to the environment's mutagenic properties and evolve them into the pale, stunted creatures we see today. Averaging a height oh. of five foot hunched and six foot standing, so they evolve a the fractured yet durable anatomy. Though they look nothing but skin and bones, they possess great strength and durability, as well as the ability to painlessly detach and retach body parts at will. Okay. This is possible due to their closed flow circuit. Yeah, they're, systems, they're still active. Which is also responsible He's still good. He's brains. good. With only some remnant knowledge passed down through the generations, they live very simple lives, spending most of their time aimlessly wandering around and interacting with their environment. On occasion, they attempt to build structures similar to that of their ancestors. Very few stand more than a day. When it's time for them to rest, writhers will bury themselves in soil and dirt in attempts of keeping cool from the humid air. Ah, nice. For what they had done, every few years that Thepkufan attempt to send some writhers back to Earth, returning them to their original home. Yeah. This does more harm than good, because the yeah. writhers themselves emit a low level of radiation. Not only do these returns terrify the masses, but in some cases of infection, they end up returning to Oromero with more writhers than when they left. Oh, okay. Is it? Oh, uh, big mistake. I will take you guys back. From their My bad. No, of course. <laughs> is what they're thinking. When experiencing some interference. It feels similar to the blockage we were experiencing in Phaetos. This may be a lead. Let's follow it. On to the next stop of our horrific holiday, Enter Grenade. Awesome. Let's head on to it. Welcome to the gnarly planet of Grenade. With a fair amount of sunlight creating a balanced biome, it holds the most floral life and an earth. Most of which are various species of squash and gourds very similar to the ones found on Earth. Okay. The oh, they're difference pumpkins. Being their bipedal stocks and carnivorous appetite. These are the results of developing around corodium. But Basically, jack o' lantern aliens. Aliens, aliens based on jack o' lanterns. This small crater's planet sits on the furthest outskirts of Enur and will constantly be hit with space debris caught in the system's gravitational pull. Sometime oh. long in the past, outside of Enur drifted the gelatinous cluster planet known as Cytra that would drift in and out of Enur's pull. Because of the planet's viscous nature, at a time it accidentally collided with Gurney and masses would break off and be stranded on the planet. This included members of Cytra's dominant species, the Opticoid. Oh, Opticoids are bipedal structure life forms standing at six foot. They possess the ability to absorb solar energy and convert it into... One of on Ben 10's aliens. Uh, cryo I. With okay. Returning to their home, they became stuck on Grenade, and over the years succumbed to the harsh environmental differences. With Grenade's gravitational pull being 12 times that of Cytra, the Opticoid's soft cartilage bodies would droop and become bottom heavy, and because of the corroding mutations, their eyes inverted into their bodies, making their vision oh. confined to their mouths. These mutations That's also creepy looking. they converted energy, now into a blinding light and a noxious gas that, when combined, can cause paralysis as well as hallucinations. Because their genetic makeup had changed so drastically, they were deemed a new species, the Tretinal Ogres. Oh, so that's what that's what the hit the terrifying face is. Despite their unfortunate origin, the Tretinal Ogres live very complacent and peaceful lives, being so out of touch with the rest of the system. They spend their days farming and building homes out of their main resource, mutant gourds. Gourds that over mutate can grow up to 60 feet in height, so making them perfect structures to hollow and house in. Knowing how often the planet is struck by debris, many also build homes in the sides of open craters, giving them protection similar to that of an underground bunker. Got it. Because they're able to immobilize sentient gourds with ease, it is also their main food source and clothing. Tretinal ogres aren't immune to their own abilities, so it's very common to see them wearing gourds as masks so they don't accidentally paralyze their neighbors. Got it. That makes sense. The breathing apparatus, because we're headed to our next stop, Enter Milgan. But that's what their faces look like. Hello. They seem like nice guys. They seem like nice folks. 
Welcome to the lagoon planet of Milgan. Having very little landmass, this planet is 91% water. Water that is so saturated in various yeah. minerals and algae that it is jet black. Yikes, night. Mostly, it's mostly water. Hmm. Note to self, don't bring Sonic into this planet, because you know how he is with water. But that's not the only reason you won't want to fish here. The other is the planet's dominant inhabitants, the Millet Blackish. The Millet Blackish are bipedal aquatic reptiles with a body length of 8 to 9 feet. They have the ability to generate a thick seaweed like hide over their entire body. Got it. They use this ability as well as their bioluminescent tendrils to confidently traverse blindly through the black waters of the planet, using the hide as a protective cocoon. In the instance oh. that their cocoon is breached, they also have very durable solid scales covering their bodies for additional protection. Nice! Having no sense of time due to the sunlight's incapability of breaching the water's surface, they will spend multiple days and nights swimming and working until exhaustion. They will this must be, it must be very difficult for them to, to handle. I like the, the I like the world in this in the setting in this but mostly the artwork. I like learning about these aliens and it, it, it's it's always fascinating to learn more. Then sleep for up to eighteen hours before getting eight, right back to work. Eighteen hours. Oh man, I can't sleep that long. Gotcha, little guy. Oh, I know you. are classified as leaders due to their importance in the laggish life cycle. When I think they, I know you. they produce a mineral and rich secretion that when diluted creates the black water the laggish require in order to breathe. Oh. The Gotta breathe. They have to breathe to survive. Happy and well fed, Why is there a broom? Why is there a broom house? underwater? About once a month, the laggers travel up to land to obtain materials and prey unavailable in the drink. They are capable of trekking on land due to the small pockets on the tops of their heads. With these, they can store small amounts of lagoon water, giving them about two to three hours out of the sea. Using this time to the fullest, they work fast, gathering and hunting to quickly return to the Lagorge. Got it. At least they have a way to go to the surface, but only last for two hours. Are those motorcycles? Surfing the surface, we find the sonaraquids. Quadrupedal reptile spider like squids that spend their day fishing. Oh, they're not meal. motorcycles. At the end of each of their support tentacles is a disc shaped ear canal that can generate a sonar pulse, making finding underwater prey like shooting ichthy prambuloids in a barrel. Okay. In capturing their prey, they will create a tough, sticky web from their thorax maw and will dip under the water surface using the web and their prehensile tentacles to quickly wrap and capture the prey. Got it. They also use this web to assist the male laggish in their own hunting endeavors. They work together, taking their job seriously, believing that without their work, their biome will become unbalanced and life as they know it may end. More frequencies. We must be getting close. Since it's clear that this planet is still thriving, why don't we visit one that all life has ended on? On to our next stop, Enter Vladius. Oh. I think I know what this might be. Our next location, Vladius, is abandoned and uninhabitable. With corrosion pollution so vast, it has created a mass comparable to a singularity. Since I will not be able to physically explore the terrain myself, I will be dispensing a miniature drone and broadcast the feed for the viewers. I'm guess it very dangerous. Good evening, offspring. I will call you Taurus. This print is beautiful. Um, Taurus, your feed is starting to glitch. Your visuals aren't clear. We, uh, we can't see anything. Taurus, you okay, buddy? Well, with nothing being capable of surviving that environment, I should have seen that coming. But based on the collective data we've acquired on the system prior, I'll be creating the necessary visuals needed. Exporting Taurus has damaged my artificial image projection capabilities, so I will be creating visuals using the primitive method. Okay. Welcome to the dead planet of Vladius. Comprised purely of stone, this planet currently has no living inhabitants. 
The last recorded species to house this planet were known as Vladats. Vladats were ah, the vampire carnivorous flying rodent like creatures standing between two and the six. The vampires. This... They are said to have been a very powerful species, possessing astonishing physical traits, giving them great speed, strength, stamina, reflexes, and the ability of flight. Despite this, they can become very physically weak when exposed to sunlight due to developing in the dark caverns catacombs. Makes sense, like a vampire. They were a very cruel people that would feed on the, quote, life energy of other species. From feeding on this energy, it would increase their own natural amount, and the additional energy they would possess would be expelled as a voluntarily emitted light from their eyes. This light had the ability to dampen synaptic currents and override them with custom ones created by the Vladad. Giving them full control oh boy. of the victim. They can also cite That's energy terrifying. into a small projectile organism known as a Corruptora. They could perform the same process, but because it's a smaller set amount of energy, they can only affect the frontal lobe and influence the victim's motor controls. These abilities gave the Vladas the tools necessary to obtaining any prey they desired, and they did not hesitate to hunt turning the populace of their neighboring planet into a source of food and labor. Yikes. Over time, this led to a rebellion. These guys are terrifying. Note to self, staying away from that planet. Species at the hands of their prey. This was the Great Vladat Extermination. Despite the extinction of the species, there are currently two living members. The first being the sample DNA stored within the Omnitrix worn by Ben Tennyson, dubbed Vampire. And the other is the resurrected Vladat leader, Lord Transel, who is currently imprisoned and the Inner Sun. To this Got day, it. Gladius is nothing but a grim reminder of a dark time. Makes okay, Ben. There are only two that exist: the leader and Ben, who has the alien. In. I just received a care package download for Plumber HQ. All my operating systems are now back online. Let's continue our hunt by looking closer into the smaller ecosystems of Ener. Oh, the wolf! The wolf planet. Welcome to the forest moon of Luna Lobo. One of the few non Luna Lobo. environments of Venere, Luna Lobo consists of one giant forest teeming with a variety of non-intelligent mammal-type life, which is perfect for the moon's dominant inhabitants, the Loboans. Loboans are anthropomorphic canine-like creatures that feature a quadruple hinged jaw. Loboan. This jaw, paired with their ability to howl at sonic frequencies, makes hunting a breeze. When in packs, they will herd together and circle the prey through chase, and then use their howling to stun them, so that they can go in for the kill. It has been noted that okay, because of the overabundance of game on Luna Lobo, the Bones will regularly sell pelts and meats to surrounding planets. But because of their playful and kind nature, they will also chase prey for sport, releasing them to run another day. The Bones typically live as they hunt in packs. Packs will contain between 6 to 12 individuals, all with various assigned tasks such as gatherers, hunters, and crafters. Got it. They hunt, they build, they deliver, they sell, they, they, they run a, they basically run a, they basically run a business. Oh, shouting matches. In cases such as this, Lobowans have their own style of diplomacy. They will have the two opposing individuals each sit on the top of stone spires and attempt to knock the other off by howling. Oh. Whoever's the strongest shouts. declared the winner. Now that's one way to settle an argument. Despite the moon's size, the Laboan population is quite large. As a way to solve overpopulation without everyone going up a tree, many will only be on moon to hunt or chase, and their residence itself will be on the planet below. So it's a moon so planet, that's so, it so it's basically a moon planet. As well, leaving only one planet left to investigate. Alright, one more planet to go. Welcome to the patchwork planet of Transel. This planet consists of land masses from various celestial bodies from the inner rotation of Ener. This is due to the fact that in the early days of the system, Transel, being Ener's largest planet, was constantly thrown back and forth by Phaedos' unbalanced gravitational pull, causing Transel to collide with its neighboring planets, resulting Got in Phaedos losing one third of its original mass and the complete destruction of Ener Lobo. Those that were not killed in these events made new homes in the ruins swept up in Transel's gravitational pull. Over time, the various species decided they needed to do something about the situation, so they pulled together their greatest minds and all the Corodium that Thep Kufan were willing to give, and made a supercharged gravitational field emitter. 
The original plan was to pull Transil back together, but what they had created was much more powerful than they thought. The field it emitted indeed pulled Transil into a stable state, but it also stopped its rotation as well as the rotation of every other planet in the system. The field created was so powerful it brought the whole system to a standstill and created the strange energy textures that stretch from planet to planet. It's like almost a spider as if web. it had gotten stuck in a web. That's what I was about. I was about to say that, like like a spider web. Now a bustling interplanetary melting pot, Transil's inhabitants include Ectoneurites, Lobolans, Thepkufan, and most abundantly, Transilians. Transilians, being the original denizens, are bipedal sapiens standing between six and eight feet. With Basically Frankenstein's and monsters design. This structure is due to their pure corrodium skeletons and corrodium deposits throughout their bodies, making the radiation direct and causing mutations that affect their muscle growth. Another repercussion of the abundance of corrodium in their system is that they turn Transilians into living lightning rods. Lightning storms are frequent on Transil due to its heavy ionized atmosphere, and with all the metal in their bodies, it makes them quite hard to miss. Transilians have grown accustomed to this and have learned how to channel and store electrical currents when struck. Okay, so that's... <laughs> so you know where they are when the lightning strikes them, so they're used to it. With all the currents constantly flowing through their bodies, they have a very high amount of synaptic activity, resulting in higher intelligence and understanding. This is also the reason behind them being the Vladat's choice of prey. The more synaptic oh. energy, the more filling for a Vladat. The Transilians were at the Vladat's mercy for hundreds of years, being used as slaves, beasts of burden, and food. They would finally be free of their albino overlords only after they started to consort with their monstrous neighbors. With the help of their planetary neighbors and fellow victims, they successfully rebelled in putting an end to the Vladas tyrannical rule for good. Got it. They were together. This brought the different species even closer together and created the horrific, terrifying, monstrous, yet beautiful planet of Enertransel. Yeah. I can see that. Anything new? Oh, this place. Whatever this place is. Now that we're exploring Transil, let's take a visit to the castles of Scare and look for more information on the rogue Ecto Lord. In case we experience interference again, I will be switching directly to my personal live feed, which I like to call Horus Vision. Horus Vision. Got it. The front door seems to be open. I will proceed with caution. So far, so good. So far, so good. All right, I made it inside. Nice I lab. I was with the information that Ben's artificial son would be here. Perhaps I should contact Plumber HQ. Hey, Horace, what you got for me? My scans have found no privatosian energies here, so I believe your artificial son has dissipated. Huh. My fusion cuisine finally died out. And it looks like those rejuvenation chambers have been repaired too. I guess it really has been a while. I'll grab Rook and fly over soon to make a new one. Good work, Horus. You're doing the plumbers proud. Now you need to get out of it, in case the scare finds you sneaking around its castle. Ben Tennyson? Horus? Hello? Are you there? Ben! Oh. 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 oh dear. My communications have stopped working. Okay, um, let's like get out of there. What's this? A gift from the plumbers? Oh, that's anyway. terrifying. Now that Tennyson is on his way here, I can finally have my revenge. The scare. Hey, Hello? Hello? Although it has been a long time, I suppose I should greet him with a friendlier face. Yours will do nicely. As for you viewers at home, enjoy your Halloween while you still can. Oh boy. <laughs> That's terrifying. The now. Oh crap. That was actually pretty cool. I like what they're doing with this. Nice. Cool poster. 
Ben Tennyson here. Thanks for checking out our video. Hi, Ben. Why don't you give it a like and leave a comment telling us what your favorite new alien was. You done and up done. With more Ink Tank projects in the Discord server below. I like or the wolf the alien so far. Updates and live streams. Okay, now gotta run. It's hero time. Hero time as always. Well, that was the Ben Ten, all the aliens, home worlds, and beyond. I enjoyed this one. This was a fun. This was a fun episode. I learned a lot more about the aliens in the in Van in this world, and it's really, really cool. I like the art. I like the artwork. I like the aliens. I like the settings. This, I, I this, this is such a, this is such a great design of this. Of the, learning about the galaxies. All right, and the scare, the voice acting, and Ben's voice acting. All of them did a fantastic job in the work. Oh man. Anywho, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this reaction video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. What were your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you, Zach Cal, for, for requesting this Patreon video. As always, take care, have a good day, be safe, and most importantly, stay frosty and stay healthy out there. Catch you all later and make sure to wash your hands. Special shout out to my following patrons Mario L. Gorobius, Jay the Real McCoy, the Gato Wolof, Daniel, Zach Cal, Bossmaker, Nevin Punzel, Curtis Wildcat, and Matthew Hensley. I appreciate your support. You guys are amazing. And if you guys want to be a member, you know what to do. Follow, that, follow the description of being a Patreon member. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I thought we agreed to put that jungle business behind us. <laughs> It was mating season. How could I have known she was your sister? Uh, <laughs> uh, how long have you two been standing there? Too long.